So Andrew Miller, principal technologist here at Pure Storage, been here about three and a half years now. We're the larger partners, customers, liaison back to product management and engineering. I know most of you from a previous life when I was building out a technical marketing team, customer and partner for a while as well. Really, really appreciate VMworld, VMware Explorer now, and the vExpert community over the years. Just it's been a great community to be part of through many different phases in my career. I've tried to continue to pay it forward in various ways because there have been people that have helped me out throughout the years. I remember Stephen hearing about, like you were, you were sharing hotel rooms, Alistair, and then Craig, like helping people from the community get here. Part of what makes this so awesome. But while I focus sometimes on a business and technology level, I often work with David because he focuses on all things VMware and Pure. Mm -hmm. David. And my name is David Stamen. I'm a principal field solutions architect focused on our platforms. Essentially what that means is all of our hypervisors, whether they're on-prem in the cloud and how they work with our storage. So Hyper-V, Kubernetes, and again, we're gonna talk about VMware today, but also our, our cloud-based services. I'm a V-expert, a code coach, um, and a VM AWS community builder. And again, we can always follow our blogs and our social media online, so I appreciate that. I'm gonna start off here more and frankly, a little bit of business and strategy mode. I might even try and get a little more technical and take the support code off part way through, we'll see. But thinking about vision and strategy, and then a little bit of almost analyst take about what we're seeing in the VVOL landscape. Briefly, Pure, I've actually done really well through the pandemic. I've been here about three and a half years, continues to grow from a revenue standpoint. There's not been a slowdown there. Uh, Gartner keeps chugging along as it, as it should, continuing adoption from a Fortune 500 standpoint, continue to go up. For Fortune, yeah, Fortune 500 and 1,000. One interesting thing there is this shift to subscription revenues, not just as an artificial thing, but has anyone felt like the world has gotten more uncertain? It's harder to plan for the last couple of years. We've seen that reflected in our customer base from a CapEx and OpEx perspective. So some of this is, yes, this is where the industry is going, but it's also we're enabling this thanks to simpler technology that can grow and shrink and actually be really easy to manage. Okay, enough said. Pure's growing well. Our VM bear business is booming as well. The strategy behind this is not inherently about storage. And you may have heard this from other folks. We're going to peel the strategy down and you know, keep it relevant. It's about focusing on applications and running anywhere, not being a little bit of old man shouting at the cloud like thou shalt not, you know, kind of thing, but actually embracing these trends because we know this is where the industry is going, as well as what we do, of course, is we focus on data, securing it, making it global, making it transportable, mobile. Last pure portfolio slide. Um, if you, this to me is actually my favorite portfolio slide of any that I've ever used because it has cake on it. It's not actually like, here's all our boxes, that kind of thing, right? And, and actually, I, um, I'll fight anyone afterwards who says carrot cake isn't the best cake. We can take that offline. I'm, I don't think I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit of fight from Ken already, so. But this is actually that from a portfolio standpoint, continuing to embrace where we've been, from a hardware innovation standpoint, like even projects with Facebook, well, now Meta, right? That's around our hardware innovation, even that is worthwhile for hyperscalers. But Pure is much more a software company than a hardware company, even from an engineering account, continuing to invest in flash array, flash blade, cloud block store, that's flash array in the cloud actually, as well as looking at cloud-based management and even consumption models. Um, even bringing kind of like cloud-based management constructs into the data center, whether that's with consumers and providers and availability zones and all that good stuff from even as it relates to storage and Portworks. If you were watching at Pure Accelerate, some new announcements there around both Portworks Enterprise, that's Kubernetes data plane stuff, as well as backup as a service, even partnering with AWS there, as well as deploying, this was actually a fun conversation, I think with Steven back at Accelerate, about Portworks data services that actually we can provide databases on demand not inherently tied to pure hardware. We like pure, pure, pure hardware underneath, but it doesn't have to be. As well, this has to be declarative, has to be API driven. And actually this is where I'll give a shout out to David because he, I don't have anything in my blog about Cobol Terraform stuff, but he does. So, you know, you can go fact check me on that right now if you want to. But what about VMware? Because it is VMware Explorer after all. Our VMware business continues to grow at pace or even more than the general pure growth. I was actually chatting with Vaughn a little bit about before time. We were bouncing around some numbers and there's even more gonna be coming out this week. There's both a continuing breadth of capabilities as well as depth. When well, you look at all the different integrations that are up there, right? You know, may, maybe unless you're in the MSP space, you pour one out for VMware Cloud Director, but it's still very relevant. It's still happening in certain spaces, right? That kind of thing. Or it's VVOLs or it's even vSphere client. E even like, you know, the first pure, the first VMware validated design was actually with Pure, although you know that's gone and now it's well-architected framework. But there's still this continuing engagement, thinking that part of the reason that David and I are up here is because you all have heard from Cody a lot and his team. But Cody Hostrom is still here. I can't quite see him behind the pillar back there, but he actually still has 
it's almost even weekly and biweekly meetings with VMware engineering management. There's continuing co-development because we see that there is this interesting shift. So I said cloud. I think this might be the first time that I had it on here. I'm sure you're playing buzzword bingo somewhere here, maybe at home, right? So you can check out cloud. I, I think I actually got five slides in before I said cloud. I, 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 I hit Kubernetes one slide ago, I realized. But what's an interesting change here, and we've been seeing this over the last three to five years, is the unit of consumption has been shifting from the VM almost to the container or to the application, right? It keeps moving around. And it's not that anything is going away, like that certain markets are disappearing. It's expanding and everything's frankly getting a little bit messier. But if there's a shift to more of applications and infrastructure, now we get into different SLAs, different configuration. And that's what leads us into, believe it or not, VVOLs. And not just as a, hey, let's geek out about fun techie stuff down the stack. But VVOLs is what takes capabilities in the storage rate. In some ways, you could say it's VMware saying, let me offload this stuff over to the storage rate so I don't have to worry about it, right? But when you have really interesting capabilities on a storage side, you can expose them natively into the environment. We're going to pull that thread a lot harder as we keep going along. But before we do that, I actually want to step back into a little bit of analyst mode. This is my last kind of, kind of sport coat comment. But being a student of the industry, and this is to me fun to kind of think about. You step back and you think a little bit. Um, I'm assuming people here are familiar with crossing the chasm in general. The idea, you know, we, we march from, you know, innovators, early adopters, privatists. Go read the book if you haven't. It's been out for a while, but it's a great book to read if you haven't. So think about this from a, not just a product standpoint, but a feature standpoint. Okay, so VVOLS. Anyone remember? I'll just, I'll just do a shout out. Anyone remember when VVOLS was first released? I was looking it up, so I'm, I cheated, I realize. What, 2017? Of course. 17? March of... <laughs> uh, March of... I, I realized I broke the seal there, but hey, I asked for it, so, you know. Um, March of 2015 was the first release. So right at seven and a half years ago, it's 2022 August. Like, why is, why is Pierre talking about this? Well, so, but bear with me. There's some interesting history here to me. So there was the, gen, there was the first release of VVOLS, and I'd argue, actually, that the Gen 1, it never actually made it quite across the chasm. Right? You know, there were enough challenges with the VASA provider being highly available and set up and endpoints, and there were all these great aspirations, but it never hit any kind of mass adoption. Where Pure started engaging was actually somewhere in late 2017, and we looked at some of the lessons and what it had come out, and we saw for a bunch of these, as well as other, other companies in the industry. So what we saw is that actually right now, the numbers that we're seeing is kind of the, maybe call it a Gen 2 VVOL that started in 2017, 2018. It was a fun conversation with Cody. We were replaying history and like, okay, it happened here, but it didn't make it, but it really kind of almost started the timeline over again. The reason that we can actually say that, you know, we believe we're actually starting to get to early majority and maybe even late majority in some cases is this. Since 2020, November, pure, according to VMware telemetry, is the number one deploy platform for VVOLs. And since then, can't say specific numbers, but we've only seen that continue to increase with a roughly linear curve. Not fun, crazy logarithmic stuff, right? But linear curve as far as it continuing to, to increase. And with that, the demand that we've seen from customers is not just, now there's a little bit different version of the slide, so bear with it. That it's actually, it starts to be not just about, do I have features and capabilities, but I actually want the whole solution. So it's like integrating with Site Recovery Manager or it's thinking about stuff that we do for ransomware mitigation, where even if you're a local admin, you can't do final deletion on the box if you, it's your credentials got compromised, you know, that kind of thing. So what we've been spending a lot of time working on is around this as a standard. I know some folks in the room are listening or on the partner side, eh, vendor side, partner side, customer, et cetera, okay. But have you ever had times where someone uses something in ways that you did not expect? <laughs> or maybe there were 50 ways you thought you might, they might use it because like, hey, we're students of the industry and we, we kind of have a sense. But then they, they picked the one that we're like, yeah, that was the least likely one, but no kind of thing. So what we've actually seen as we've gotten past that kind of into that VVOL Gen 2 is that when you think about standards, especially kind of nascent standards, you know, they're evolving. They, t they take time. That's the trade off of standards is that you have to have flexibility. People are going to do what they jolly well please. I used to do that as a customer. Like, it's my thing. I'm going to do whatever I want to know with it. And then you've got to have enough stability to actually, as it nicely says on the slide, embrace customer creativity, right? We can say it a bunch of other ways. So for Pure, what we saw about three years ago was that we had to do a lot of hard engineering work around these themes, stability, 
flexibility. I don't know if anyone grew up with this by any chance. We call this Gen 1 or 2 V-Vols where you'd actually build the kit out. Um, maybe that was just an excuse to like have be sniffing glue for three days straight and your parents would let you do it. I don't know, right? For me, it was like model railroads, that kind of stuff. But at the end of this, this is a lot of fun and you build some neat stuff. And at the end, it's very rigid. It's not very flexible. If you want to make any changes to this, um, it's probably more because your kid brother or sister kicked it down and it broke and then you, you, you cry and get angry, and, but it's done, right, kind of thing. So we wanted to move off of this, and this is now where we're going to spend a lot of time exploring what we've seen, the challenge that we've observed and where we've been investing our engineering around VVOLs, all about servicing back to the application, is around scale. Something that runs at 1 versus 10 versus 100 versus 1,000 is actually a fundamentally very different thing under the covers and what you have to do to give that same experience Now you build the code and you test it in QA. Performance at scale, right? That's also a very different thing. If you're getting 10 API calls versus 1,000, do you have to bundle them? Do you have to coalesce them? Do you do it in your layer? Do you go back and work with VMware regularly? Or like, mm, you're, you're, on what layer are you actually creating a denial of service? And then even stability that it behaves the same way from a stability standpoint. There's a lot of hard work, to, one, to make it perform the same as a 1,000. So the goal, and we're just about done section one, I think I'm on time too, is that we want to move it to this. So uh, I don't have this one. My son has a slightly smaller one. I'm just going to assume everyone loves Legos to some degree. It's really just maybe how much do we love Legos in various pieces. And this is like, a, I think, a universal thing, right? So uh, my wife has a lot of that. We have a lot of the CNY sets, but we want to move is something that is much more flexible and more modular so that our customers, as we've already seen them start to do this, we can continue to support them in putting these pieces together in ways that maybe we anticipated them, but not exactly. Continuing to be the best VMware platform. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bold claim, but also need to be the best VVOL platform. And doing this isn't just a checkbox exercise. It's been the last year or two of really hard under the covers engineering work. And it actually is what drives our roadmap moving forward. Yeah. So during the journey of Revive Vols, uh, what has been the most difficult obstacle to overcome for adoption of Revolves on Pure? Is it the Pure's adoption rate of features? Or is this customers understanding of what Revolves can benefit for them? Or what do you think is it a practical, technical? What do you what do you think the biggest challenge has been? I'll take one shot and then maybe two. So at least for me, because I started actually some of the VVOLs back at the very beginning of vSphere six days. And there was so much excitement there. And then a lot of people, regardless of what storage vendor they were using, um, got burned or stuff didn't work out. And there's, we only have so much time for projects and new things to look at. So almost to me, the, the biggest challenge has been helping people realize that the challenges they hit in the past have gotten past as an industry and frankly, especially as pure, uniquely well. And then like actually take the time to look back at this and it's worth looking at because customers are busy. They're all doing, I don't know it's a cliche, they're doing more with less, they don't have time to look at stuff. So it's almost just like, okay, there really is something here and you've got to build enough of a relationship and expertise to say like, okay, spend the time looking at this, it's good stuff. Please trust me, you won't regret it. So it's almost that kind of paying for the sins of the past when people tried it. I mean, that's been the biggest challenge, David. Yeah, I think a little bit is, I don't think the features and those challenges are really stopping adoption because a lot of those may, maybe meant you couldn't do it at scale. And so as customers learned a little bit more about the product and they've been using VMFS and they're, they've like, they've heard, what are these VVOL things that we've heard about, right? And they're, they learn what they are, what the capabilities are and how they can fit. Because even when I talk to customers, I might say, well, VVOLs aren't going to be for every single workload in your data center, but here's where you can focus on and use them as building blocks. Once you understand them, then you can continue to kind of build out your environments.